Hello there, welcome to Fall of the Samurai Bridge, where in the previous part, we fought some big, brutal battles against the major shogunate powers, and we did take out many of their armies over a winter of several invasions. We were theoretically going to counterattack, however, we were stabbed in the back by our imperial allies just behind the front line. So now we're fighting in all directions once again, and we're severely outnumbered overall. A difficult situation. Right now, one of my armies has come back to start attacking to the west, here besieging one of our previously allied locations with a full stack inside, and there's plenty more stuff beyond that. Up on the front line, we're going to have a tiny bit of help actually, because the Satsuma have landed an army, you can see them hanging out there in enemy territory. I'm going to let them do their thing in front of me while I sneak around to the right to try and take Hitachi fields here. It is somewhat garrisoned up, so my not full stack going after them won't be able to just overwhelm them easily, but should be enough. Meanwhile, the army that fought off so many invasions before is currently still facing multiple enemy stacks in the area. So we're going to hang out and defend again for this turn. We still need to replenish on that stack as well. As it happens, the Setsuma turn back and actually attack Hitachi fields before I can. We have the chance to help them out with this. But we don't want to do that since then we just take some casualties and get nothing for it. So Setsuma easily take the place. Well, at least someone theoretically on our side has it for now. Now jumping over to this Matsumoto siege, they sallied out, which I didn't expect here because they are weaker than we are. Usually the AI won't bother sallying if they're weaker. It's basically the same army that we have, but worse in various ways. So we just need to line up and shoot them to get through this one. It started off with a relatively rare event. The enemy have naval support fire and they actually used it on us, although not very well. They just kind of shot this place behind our front line. Not quite sure what the plan was there or if all the shots missed their real target. I was looking over there because in the actual battles you can see the ships that are shooting. They don't appear in the replays though. Anyway, all I need to do is set my men up, put them on kneel fire and let the enemy walk into our firing arcs. In this case, they've got some cav, they're gonna charge right on in. This is their captain's cav unit, so killing these guys will reduce enemy's morale. And as it happened, I'd already sent my sharpshooters forwards while waiting for the enemy to show up and actually put some stakes in front of the main line. I hadn't done that along the entire line though because I mostly put them on the flanks which was a waste. So this cav unit does make it to the front lines but they're basically dead so they're not really going to do much now that they're here. With that done they're going to come at us with a melee charge very handy since it's going to block some of the enemy's return fire against us. And a melee charge up a slight hill not going to do very much, they lose entire units on the way in. They can slap their light samurai onto Banzai mode so they're unroutable and force them to reach our lines. So some of them do make it and start a melee, but even though they'll have stats on their side, they probably can't kill us all at this stage, so it's a bit too late. We'll just stand here and hope somebody shoots them at some point. Maybe our general there could help out in the melee in front of him if he can be bothered. The rest of the fight's going pretty well, as you can see. The ranged battle's certainly going to go our way because our troops have a bit higher stats and double attack because we're kneel firing, so we can certainly win. I even managed to pop a melee attack of my own. I rarely bother doing this, but I've sent out my own light samurai to attack the enemy's right flank since they were dying a bit slowly due to there being a hill in the way or something. On the left flank, we've deployed there a unit I'm not sure I've used yet so far in the campaign, the Royal Marines. They are just better line infantry, but they're much better because not only are they good in terms of stats, they have breech loading rifles. There's no stat for this in particular, but it means they shoot way faster than regular units. So they actually do a lot more damage than it looks like they're going to do, even with their already very high stats. After the win, we get a really bad end battle. The battle decides to leave virtually all of the enemy army alive, unfortunately. So we don't get a chance to take down the castle. And more to the point, another two-thirds of a stack has showed up to reinforce. Really annoying that the uh, treatment of the end battle button is such a hidden mechanic because had I known I certainly would have manually played that because we could have taken the castle this turn and faced off against their reinforcements from a safe position. Instead, we just keep sieging and we'll see what happens. Despite my earlier claims I was going to keep defending that bridge position, it looks like for some reason I moved up and set an ambush inside enemy territory and they've just walked past it. 
so can't remember when this happened, I must have missed it in the footage, but basically I'm just going to do it again, I'm leaving an army ambushing outside that enemy castle to see if the army will come out, get ambushed, and then we'll take the castle, but you might have spotted they've already walked past us with a stack, so defensively this isn't the most steadfast setup. I was able to get a peace deal with Nagaoka, in fact they asked me for the peace deal. That'll take some of the pressure off because we do border them just up to the north there, but we're still fighting along most of our borders right now. As for the next fight, it's actually not around here at all, we're going to jump back over to our little war with the Takatori, where they're much bigger than us, they could easily overwhelm us, but so far they've been quite generous at only coming in one army at a time. So they've got an army here, it is being joined by a few remnants from their previous attack. But we are ready, we've got a decent garrison, we're at a disadvantage in theory, the enemy have a lot of good units, but of course we have walls to play with and that makes a huge difference. This fight starts off in the same fashion the earlier fight we did at this castle starts off with our Yari Kachi fighting Yari Light Samurai in the top right corner and getting beaten by them but we've got stuff shooting in on the fight so we should be able to win eventually, that old chestnut. But they did pull out a slightly more advanced version of this plan where some guys are coming up the next wall over which would put them behind my position. Unfortunately that's their worst guys making that attack. They've got most of their troops coming up from the south, just big blobs of line infantry. The risk here is they could line up and just gun battle with us because while we have cover, that's not enough for things like our levy infantry to actually win a ranged battle with so many line infantry. Luckily though, they are just walking towards us and even our weird cannon glitched levy infantry are able to be accurate enough to cut the enemy down because we have this geometric advantage. Since we're kind of above the enemy as we shoot, the cross section of the unit is bigger than it normally is, so inaccurate units tend to hit enemies by accident quite a lot, and even levies do big damage. Basically, they're going to take huge casualties as they try to make a very slow attack on that southern face. Back at the top right corner, looks like we're starting to work things out. The shoot and sacrifice has worked and the enemy's sneaky rear attack probably could have worked, but these guys are routing as they go over the wall, the climb is killing them. So not much is going to come of that. Once they start making their main attack in the south, they're trying to climb up the outer portion of the castle, but the adjacent inner portion can still shoot at them. So they're taking huge casualties, and then they get to this section here, and again we've set up for a shoot and sacrifice, meaning they're going to have the same problem as the other guys attacking earlier, only they're not even a melee unit, so going in for a melee attack probably isn't going to work quite so well. Now for no reason we're going to follow this little drama, we see a group of troops going towards my levies, they get really cut down, everyone behind them turns off and runs somewhere else, then we have these five guys sprinting in, some shots come in from somewhere and kill three of them, and then they make it, and one of them kills the flag bearer in the lever unit, that probably would be a symbolic victory in a film or something, in reality he is immediately shot and nothing comes of this, so a very brave charge, looks like one more guy was coming in to help out, but he has a bad day, and that's going to be a metaphor for the rest of the infantry's experiences really. Some of them are trying to get into the inner part, but looks like I actually spotted it and moved some spear levies to stop them. Now we just wait, keep shooting, keep sacrificing, and something good will happen. All of the guys in the outer part of the castle are garrison units, so they're all sacrificable, doesn't really matter what happens to them, and there's also some incentive to not have them get too many kills because they're taking away experience that real units could get. There is a line of infantry unit in my inner part of the castle that's killing me and I'm kind of ignoring it. I put it to you this is a replay corruption, the sort of thing I would ordinarily not notice but in siege defences the micro is so much easier, I do tend to see what's going on. Looks like the rest of the fight is winding down, they don't have enough stuff to overcome at that bottom right corner. Here is some proof that I'm not lying about this not being my real strategy because here we've got some levy infantry, or some spear levy sorry, who are sprinting to the other side of the map to fight this group of guys that's already routed, so obviously in the real battle they were just making their attack or something. I put it to you that this is all wrong, however I guess it doesn't matter because garrison units dead or alive, the result's going to be the same and we're just going to cut to it because I can't be bothered to go look up the real footage since we already saw this battle effectively. We won, it was a heroic victory, the enemy lost virtually everything, our loss is mostly among garrison units, therefore irrelevant hashtag garrison lives do not matter. That's the end of that, but we're going to jump back to the same fight we saw earlier in this very part, actually. 
because the Matsumoto Sally, again with the survivors I was complaining about not dying earlier, this time they're backed up by the stuff outside so they're actually just as strong as they were before. Now I got fooled at the start of this one, because I thought lightning never strikes twice or whatever it is. I thought they won't fire at the same random spot behind the left side of our line again, and this time I'd actually put troops there as if tempting them to do so, and they did shoot at them. So there we go, I guess I walked into that one. It was also a bit closer to the actual line and got some hits. Overall though, very minimal casualties and we get away with that. And as for the enemy being as strong as they were before, as I just said, in fact, because they're attacking with their two armies separately, it's not really that easy for them. They could have waited, but they decided not to. And that's going to not work very well for them. They're attacking me here with some cav, and my men are unfortunately not shooting them, at first at least. There are all kinds of things in Shogun 2 that can jank out ranged units to stop them from firing. In this case, they do eventually start firing just as the enemy arrive, and we do repulse those cav. Didn't need to really, because we did have the cav spikes out as well. Here comes their captain's unit, it's only a unit of spear levy and it's charging our front line, being shot down. That's probably not going to go very well, so once again we'll get the early morale debuff on the enemy for getting rid of their captain. Other stuff's going to make the charge as well. Probably going to have about the same amount of luck, although again we do see a bit of good old fashioned jank as my troops are forgetting to fire at them. They get round to it eventually, it's not like in some cases in Total War games where they just sort of stand there forever and do nothing. At least we do have our Royal Marines again, and I was looking more closely in this replay at how quickly they were shooting. And they do shoot very quickly, it takes them about 5 seconds to reload because they're just putting bullets in there and firing, these are some futuristic guns. So that's doing big damage combined with Neil Fire and the fact that they have 95 out of 100 accuracy they're probably going to do plenty of damage. This is, by the way, the second army we're shooting at right now. The first army has already been shot off the field. So yes, the fact they attacked in two waves helps us out a bit since we can prepare for the second wave and not get shot back at all that much as well. In this case, looks like the Marines are going to hold off the enemy's melee charge. Our right flank is contending with a sword unit attack. That doesn't go very well by the looks of things they are pushed back. And at this stage, so much stuff is dead, we get a chain route. Although over here they banzai some samurai into our sharpshooters, that's going to be a bit dangerous. But aside from that, everything is great and the battle soon comes to an end. It went better than the first time we did this battle. Minimal casualties, the enemy took loads of casualties. So now the castle, pretty much ours. All of the army outside died and most of the garrison died. To the extent we can now take the place. I've been saying castle. This place isn't actually a very useful settlement to us. It's only a fields style settlement. So while it's in a very strategic location on the junction of two directions packed with enemy territory, it's not a very defensible location. We won't get any fortifications if we get attacked there. So we'll come back to that. We're going to react to that in this turn. I was also looking here at our vassal, the Kofu, who have actually been defeated in battle recently by the Matsumoto. So a war is going on there, and I'm going to start putting troops on this road because I wanted to try and either defend our vassal or just defend this front in general against a possible Matsumoto attack coming down that road. Then back to the main army just south. I'm going to go and ambush on the road to the next enemy territory. A very aggressive move. They could attack Suriga Fields from the west or the south and quite easily take it. But as I mentioned, I don't think there's any advantage to defending it right now, so I thought I'd try and ambush them instead. I was able to grab this peace treaty with the Takatori, so that ends the war going on back over at Ki for now. This is not the first time we've tried to get out of that war and it just comes back, we shall see. We're also at war with the Oweji Sumimoto over there. I'm sending the army that was going for Hitachi Fields to now go for Shimosa Fields off to the west. Just going to start moving over there. Meanwhile, our main army sitting in an ambush position outside Shimosa proper has actually gotten lucky because the army that had bypassed our defences has now walked off and not attacked us. That's great. I was looking through the messages here to find out that indeed the enemy do actually know I'm hidden here. So they haven't reacted to me being here, but they haven't fallen for my trap either. All I'm going to do is just put another ambush two pixels away. Pretty sure that resets the intel, so that's equally likely to successfully grab an ambush. 
Now, my fleet that is in less bad condition, I've got two fleets, one's basically dead and this is the other one that's kind of dead. This fleet is going to start moving back west because one day I would like to get my trade back. So I'm going to have to have a fleet at Kyushu realistically and I can't afford to make more ships. So that fleet of damaged ships will very slowly come back here. In the meantime, I've made one not very good ship. I thought maybe that can overcome the one ship currently blockading my trade port. It turns out it is the same ship that we're facing. I'd hoped it'd just be a gunship or something. A gunboat, I should say, sorry. So, it's a very matched engagement, and I thought, well, let's just go in manually and shoot at each other. One thing I had hoped was that I would have explosive shot and they wouldn't. That would allow me to grab an advantage in an equal engagement. But I think we're both firing explosive shot at each other, and in this mod it appears to be less effective. It doesn't start fires or explode all that much at all, actually. So we end up really close together. I got into the musket range so the crews could fire at each other and speed things up a bit. This proved to not go very well for us. They were killing us more than we were killing them, perhaps because of the difficulty. Tried to get around the back of the enemy ship, but they can just rotate on the spot. So there's no way to outflank them or anything here. And in the end, it doesn't go very well. We lost like twice the number of crew that the enemy did. Although we didn't lose our ship, you can see it just retreats back to the port it came from. So this does open up the possibility of simply repairing our ship, which makes your crew come back. And then we'll attack again, and that time we'll have a bit more crew and a bit more hull strength. So maybe we'll still be able to actually break open the trade port. Doesn't matter right now because the port's broken, so I can't trade through it. Meaning there's no particular rush. For our ambush plan, I decided to supplement it with some bait. I had this one unit that I was going to put into the main army. It couldn't get there this turn, but what it can do is sit right next to it. While that might be a bit dangerous, in this case it's very useful because the enemy might only see the spear levy and move out to kill them, thus moving them closer to the ambush. As you can see, in the meantime, the Jozai decide to redeclare war on us. Their territory is just to the west of where we are looking at right now. This could be inconvenient, and we do see the Aizu army go back towards the bridge that I'm not defending. Overall, things are going badly defensively, but offensively my plan has finally worked. They did come out to go and attack the Spear Levy, and they did get ambushed, so a chance to take down the defenders of Shimusa. I've set up in the usual formation with a bunch of stuff shooting the front of the column, including the artillery, with some shrapnel shot especially effective in the first moments of the fight. And I've also got that little wing off to the side that's actually too far to shoot at the main column. It is though going to be where most of my micro is happening, because a bunch of units came over to attack, in particular some cabs who have easily outflanked this position. Now I'm trying to reform to shoot at them before they attack me. Unfortunately, it's revolver cav and they are going to be revolving, shooting into the flank of our unit there and grabbing some good kills. The main fight at the front of the column will be fine because while they're shooting at us, their numbers are useless because they're in such an abysmal formation. Plus our mortars are slamming them and breaking that formation apart. All good stuff. They're going to take enormous casualties. You may have also noted it's a night battle. I've unlocked night battle on our faction leader, the commander of this army. So we've reduced enemy morale in that fashion as well. We get a big cav attack on our little other position, but for whatever reason, it looks like they got charge cancelled. They just stopped right in front of our line. And now we are shooting them at point blank range and inflicting big damage. So we really got away with things there, just somehow good stuff. And now we just need to wait for our frontal gunnery on the column to do the damage and they're going to be taking so many casualties that we're guaranteed a good result really. Looks like some sort of strange fights happening over here where the enemy are attacking with sharpshooters in melee while their calf just stroll about. My sharpshooters are going to fire silently at their calf. I think there's a limit to how many sound effects the game can play at once so sometimes guns don't make any noise. Handy. Uh, Artillery that's not the mortars were able to do some more damage than usual in this battle because they could shoot at something that's in the distance. For whatever reason, they can't fire at like medium range. I've noticed it's just something about this mod, the way it calculates line of sight seems to be different. They won't fire even when they do have line of sight. Probably because the games or the mods trying to be accurate because no, you can't really slowly arc an artillery shot at very short range, even though it's in the range in the game's logic. So I guess it makes sense. 
Whatever the case, looks like something good happened in that battle. We had a 10 to 1 ratio, our armies ready to go for another fight, the enemy armies completely dead, just what we needed, and they were so impressed they even built a statue in honour of that battle, so clearly they thought we did well. But with all good news, we need to have some more bad news to keep things going, and now we've got the Tekiyama joining a war against us. This is another of my allies, my actual allies. They did have an alliance with Takeyama. I think they broke it recently and now they've joined our enemies, probably the Matsumoto. They've actually taken down the Nagaoka in the area. So my recent peace treaty with the Nagaoka now doesn't mean all that much because the places they could have attacked me from can now just be used by the Takeyama to attack me instead. Inconvenient indeed, and because they've recently captured them, we can intuit there's probably an army there as well, so they might actually use it. I'm not able to get a peace treaty with the Matsumoto, which I really want at this stage. My ambush plan hasn't come to anything, the enemy are just kind of standing around here. I decided to go after this smaller army, but when it moved away I thought I'm not going to use all my points going after them to attack, because that would leave me too open to the enemy just taking the field settlement. Instead I started looking around, trying to find some kind of defensive ambush I could do, ideally an ambush where I can also replenish at the same time so it's not such a waste if it doesn't trigger. In the end I just sat in the settlement, no real advantage to that, but at least it's in a strategic location, we know we're going to intercept the enemy if we stay there at the very least. Now I'm going to make this attack on Shimosa Fields, or am I, because as I attack there's quite a big force standing just outside and the balance bar is really bad for us once the enemy's garrison has spawned and been taken into account. So with that there, I thought we probably can do this with the old reinforcement camping trick. We can kill the reinforcements instantly as they come onto the field and then turn to deal with the garrison later. We did something like this earlier in this campaign. I left it for now to move my main force. I wanted to see, obviously, if we can follow up on the ambush victory. And it looks like we can. We can go for the castle this turn. We can also move the spear levy bait to help out a bit. They have bypassed us once again, so we're still open on the defensive. But that doesn't necessarily mean this is a bad idea, because going to take the castle could cause that army to turn around and try to retake this castle from us, thus giving us a good defensive position. It just depends how they react to this. We ought to resolve this fight. It's actually a good auto resolve in terms of numbers, although it did kill one full unit. A really accurate auto resolve. That's exactly the sort of result you would get if I'd manually done that battle. Annoying because the inaccuracy of auto resolves usually favours the player. We're getting hammered by the increased accuracy of this mod at the moment, it seems. Now I'm going to make another inductive decision or deductive decision, I don't remember what it is. I noticed that the Jozai have taken the Satsuma territory, that Hitachi Fields place, and because they've just taken it, again we can guess that there is an army there. And because Jozai are now back at war with us, I thought I would quite like to get back to that bridge just to the south, because that would block three territories worth of stuff from attacking our stuff to the south. And because this attack at Shimosa Fields is going to be difficult, I figured let's just not do it and withdraw to the bridge. We actually though get a classic withdraw glitch, it's not really a glitch, just an oversight. Withdrawing moves your army distance wise, not in terms of movement points. So we actually withdrew a very short distance, but it was like four or five turns worth of movement because it put us on the other side of a river. Inconvenient, so now we can't really defend the bridge or attack, that screwed everything up. However, I can get a peace treaty with the Aizu. So it's not all bad, something good happened at last. This will take the pressure off, that's a couple of armies that are not about to attack us anymore, and some more territory to the north can be ignored, so our new Shimosa castle position is now only vulnerable from the west and east. Opposite directions, inconveniently enough, so if I want to attack in one direction, then the other direction becomes a danger. Pretty annoying, but we'll just have to see what the enemy do there. We need them to mess up and perhaps give us a nice, easy defensive battle or something. Might have spotted there for a second. We're actually nearly at the maximum level of fame that we'll need to become the Imperial Vanguard and perhaps get out of all the Imperial parts of the war, which would effectively allow us to win. So that's what we're going for. We just need some more fame, some more victories coming from somewhere. We can get one right now by moving out and doing that little plan I mentioned earlier, we can attack the enemy ship blockading our port with our newly repaired ship 
Again, this doesn't actually do anything because the port's dead. It's not actually the blockade that's stopping us from trading. It's just the fact we don't have any money, so we can never repair the port. But we're one step closer, going to take a long time to save up for the repairs. But I like to believe that one day we'll get very rich off this and we could just outstack the enemy. Well, I'm rambling now. Let's see what actually happens next time.